Hey guys, welcome to episode 121 of OG Toys, I'm OG. Today, LEGO Star Wars makes its return back to OG Toys. It's been a while since I've reviewed any kind of Star Wars LEGO for uh, for you guys, and we got a really awesome ship, and I've managed to snag some of the other Star Wars LEGO stuff that's been out for the past few months. But as you know, the past few months have been pretty busy for me. Uh, I took about a month break from uh, YouTube because I got married. And definitely took up a lot of my time, some of my resources too, because it was a rather large wedding. But uh, it was definitely the best day of my life. I married the most amazing person, and I'm truly blessed to have her in my life. But, okay, enough of the gushing, let's get back to uh, the toys at hand. So, previous is Mandalorian Fighters, a 403-piece set, set number 9525. Now, this guy was only available at Walmart. I found uh, this guy once at Walmart here locally in Canada, and that's the only time I've seen it. And that was a little while ago, and my lovely wife was fortunate enough to pick it up for me while I was uh, busy doing some other stuff. But uh, this is an awesome set. If you can find it, definitely pick it up. It has some extremely nice aspects about it. The ship itself definitely fits in perfectly with the Star Wars universe. It has a lot of really interesting features. The uh, minifigures, too, pretty darn awesome. You got uh, Pre Vizsla, who was definitely one of the highlights for this set for me, and I definitely wanted to get it for that figure. You got an Obi-Wan Kenobi from Clone Wars, who's actually uh, pretty cool. I only have an, a, one other figure of Obi-Wan that came with the Jedi Jedi Shuttle, I believe. We came with a couple other cool, uh, interesting characters. And then, of course, you get another uh, troop builder. You get a Mandalorian. And you can't go wrong having another one with him because, hey, there's a bunch of them that Pre Vizsla has in his death squad. And it's pretty cool. So let's take a closer look at the figures. I'm going to start off with uh, the Mandalorian. You can take a look here. Exact same figure from the the uh, battle packs. Of course, he doesn't come with a stand. I just prefer to have a stand when I'm displaying this. But he has some really nice details. He comes with a mini blaster. Jet pack. The helmet, of course, has that awesome Boba Fett styling. We can just remove that. And he has the Mandalorian face underneath. Jetpack is, of course, removable. And he doesn't have any printing on the back. But it's a nice piece. Doesn't have double side printing on the head either. But the head's pretty much going to be covered up all the time with this awesome mask. Very cool looking minifigure. Next we have Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now Obi-Wan's decked out in his Season 1, Season 2 Clone Wars armor. Now this guy doesn't have any printing on the back. Would have been nice if they added some there. But unfortunately they didn't. The hairpiece. We've seen this hairpiece used on uh, Bruce Wayne as well in the DC Superheroes line. And the face, of course, very Clone Wars-esque, with those big eyes. And it's cool to see, I'm going to show you a quick comparison, guys, of the Obi-Wan Kenobi that came with uh, Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. Now, this figure is really cool. I love the new uh, face sculpt they did on him. The printed piece there looks fantastic, and look, he does have back printing. No back printing. <laughs> Would have been cool if they added that. But uh, definitely like this head sculpt, and it looks actually really cool on this body. So bear with me for one sec, guys. I just want to show you how that looks. And if you haven't done it, you might want to consider doing it, because uh, it definitely looks really cool. There you go. And I'm thinking about actually adding maybe a brown cape, or actually maybe two brown capes, to kind of have a cloaking over his shoulders. I think that would be pretty cool. But that I'll probably try in a little while, and I'll show you the results of it. But let's get back to the original Obi-Wan here from the set. So let me reattach his head and his hair, because he uh, needs his hair. And there you go. And now the main figure, the coolest figure out of this set for sure. This is the main man, pre Vizsla, with his black lightsaber. He got identical lightsaber from every other Jedi figure, but he has a black beam, which is really cool. Would have been interesting to see if they could try and make that sort of translucent, translucent black, if that's possible, it's more of a shade of gray, I guess, but 
Definitely uh, a very unique lightsaber. Looks awesome. Brie Vizsla himself. Really nicely detailed. He has leg printing. Doesn't have anything on the arms, but that chest printing just looks awesome. He has your traditional Mandalorian face with just a bit more details on the cheekbones here. He has the blonde hair. We've seen this hair used on Count Dooku, which is probably one of the only freaking Clone Wars figures I don't have. I missed out on his uh, original release back in 2009. Don't know if I'm going to buy that huge uh, Malavin set that uh, he's included in because I pretty much got all the other figures and I really don't care for the ship that much. But I might break down and buy it just to get him. We'll see. He has the awesome shoulder cape here with the uh, Death Squad symbol. He has a darker jetpack. Looks just awesome. We can pop this off and I'll show you the back side. Because the figure doesn't have any back printing, just like the Mandalorian Trooper. But there you go. And then, of course, the helmet. This helmet is quite spectacular. Take a look at that, guys. That is one badass looking Pre Vizsla minifigure. Just an awesome looking design on that on this helmet. Extremely well done. We'll pop the blade in his hand. There you go. Pre Vizsla, ready for action, ready to battle over on Kenobi. Just an awesome, awesome minifigure. Well worth getting this set just for this guy. Okay, now on to the ship. Now, the ship was actually quite a fun build, to tell you the truth. I thought it would be very repetitious with the uh, double wings like that. But once you're kind of putting it together, it is actually pretty cool, and it has some uh, neat action features, features, so to speak. It did come with two instruction manuals. Nothing major. You know, still the same building steps. It did come with quite a few stickers, though, but the stickers definitely add some more dimension to the uh, overall design. One thing I did find that was pretty cool in the instruction manuals is, of course, this here. It has the sets that are currently available. It's nice to see that. Jabba's Palace, the Malavents, uh, the Sith Fury, Gungan Sub, the Republic's Fighter, I believe it's called, uh, since Teen's Starship, and of course, we got the Sail Barge there, and those little mini planet sets. What I really thought was cool, check that out. You got all of the new summer sets, all the figures. And there is a lot here. And what's cool is not too many uh, duplicates or reissues, so to speak. I mean, the Bausch figure right there of Leah is absolutely awesome. Jabba looks spectacular. The Gamorrean Guard, you know, even uh, Count Dooku. Dang, I gotta get that figure. And uh, this guy here is absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to get the uh, Republic Starfighter, Fighter, whatever the heck it's called. Except this looks amazing. And of course, from the Gungan sub, you got Padme there, Queen Amidala. She's quite unique looking. Darth Malgus. And the Sith Trooper guys look pretty cool. And of course, we got a new Boba Fett and a Luke in Jedi outfit. And of course, Lando Carissian in his... Uh, Skiff Guard outfit. Very cool. There you go, guys. Just wanted to show you that. Let's take a closer look at the ship. So the ship here, definitely some uh, very cool-looking aspects about it. First thing you'll notice here, you got these blasters on the front, which can pivot and move. I'm not sure why they really put that there. Um, I thought it would be cool if you could maybe move them up or down, but it just pivots from side to side. The cockpit as well. The canopy opens, you can fit two figures in there. You can see a bit of detail on the uh, control panel there for uh, one of your pilots. But it is cool that you can put two figures in there. I thought that was really neat. And uh, you can put both your guys in there. One of the big main features for this thing, of course, is the spinning aspect. I just want to show you some of the back compartment here. This was really nicely done. That isn't a sticker, it's actually a printed piece right there. And of course, you drop this down, and that piece comes out, and it's for storage. You can put whatever you want in there. But that's pretty cool. I like that. So you pop that back in. 
You got some more blasters here on the side, which of course rotate. You can shoot each one independently. You can position them any way you like. Now for the engines, they have these yellow discs here, which are supposed to be, uh, you know, repulsors coming through. And I thought that was pretty cool. I like the way they did that. Now the biggest thing, of course, this thing, it spins. The cockpit is on a separate gantry there. And you can see, unfortunately, I'll try and get you guys a bit better perspective. You can have this ship positioned like this. And as you can see, you can put in some kind of different battle formations with the wings. This thing rotates completely 360. So you can spin that around. And what's cool, it's not overly loose or super tight, where you kind of have fear of possibly breaking something. Nothing whatsoever. Thought that was uh, quite well done. Cockpit here, and there we go. Let's get it back into place. And another cool feature about this ship, the wings go completely straight up. So I guess when you're in a landed position, you have an extending landing gear right there. You can bring that down. And there you go. You can have the ship in a landed position. It looks pretty cool. I really do like this ship. They did a fantastic job on it. Was a little skeptical because of the design. It just didn't look like anything that was familiar with me throughout the Star Wars universe. Star Wars universe, excuse me. But the design just really won me over. The cool spinning feature. I thought that was really cool. Just like how they had in that Jedi shuttle. But I think this was executed better, without a doubt. And uh, it's just a cool, unique-looking starfighter. The figures, you cannot go wrong with these figures. Man, pre is one of the best minifigures that I've got in a heck of a long time. And uh, Mandalorian Trooper, cool. It's nice to have another Obi-Wan. And let's take a closer look at the box here. I'll just pan this up. And you can see there, no identification saying that's a, a limited edition or a store exclusive like we've seen on Luke's... Uh, Sand speeder, but uh, definitely a tough to find set. You do want to pick it up when you see it because it's not going to last very long. I'll quickly show you the back. Don't mind that little, <laughs> don't mind the bow on that uh, case there. It's just to hold some actual Star Wars figures from Lego Star Wars guys. But you can check it out on the back. It shows off some more features. It shows Obi Wan battling. Uh, under the Death Squad. It's just really well done. Nice looking box, has some cool looking graphics on it. And it's just a really awesome set. Guys, if you have any indication, you're thinking, hmm, on the fence about picking it up, pick it up. I paid, uh, or my wife paid about $49 Canadian for it. Pretty much the same price on the uh, lego.ca website here in Canada. I think it's maybe 10 bucks cheaper in the States. But definitely pick this up. You won't be disappointed. Fun build, awesome figures, cool design on the ship. Stay tuned, guys. We got a heck of a lot more Lego sets coming up. Always remember, rate, comment, and subscribe for those new videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more Lego Star Wars reviews. Take care.